they are one of the first to let the predators know that you're out there. So you go forward a few feet, five five steps or so, and, and try to stick to the shadows just the way that they do, and um, stop and wait, and, and if you hear any crows, you stop and wait, and, but they're the snitches of the forest. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the raven, the raven and the crow is used for day, and the owl and the wolf for night. So a, a raven will come in, but there is um, the predator sequence of birds, which is woodpecker, robin, then blue jay, then raven and crow. So and then then bigfoot. If the ravens can't handle it, then they call it the bigfoot. When the ravens spot food, they're going to call on it. Now, if you're the one who's outside and they're calling on you, you you have to let them that know that you're not food, you're not prey. So the first way is to look at the raven um, eye to eye or as close as you can to where it's calling and look straight at it. Don't ever take your eye off of it and they'll start flying away but keep your eye on it until it's completely gone or it'll turn, it'll, it'll, all it's trying to do is get behind some trees to see if you're not gonna watch. And then if it comes over that, you know, around that ridge where it can see you, and if you're, you know, already got your back turned, it's gonna come back. Mm-hmm. If you're, if you're some, a, you know, like a whole bunch of crows are circling around you or in the area, find one crow and do the same thing to it. Don't ever take your eye off of it. And that one crow, I mean, that you're watching, every crow will leave. Um, but they're used for food to call, you know, to purge, to call on food. The same way an owl is at nighttime because they don't just hoot, just to hoot. They hoot whenever they find food. So if they're hooting, when you're out there, they spotted you and they're hooting, saying, "This, there's food right here. I can't handle it, but, you know, there's Bigfoot or a dogman in the area. They right. get to eat either way. Or if you hear an owl here and then one there and one there and one there, that's not owls. You probably already know that. Right. Yeah. Being surrounded or any kind of critters like that. Yeah, we hear a lot of owls whenever we're out. You know, we'll hear them at a distance. Yeah. And then pay attention sometimes too, there'll be one critter call for each person that comes out. Like each one of you has your own stamp of what sound they're gonna use for you. Mm -hmm. So when say um, Michael comes out, he's got a bird that sounds, you know, like this. Uh, When the sister comes out, she's got a bird that sounds like this. Uh, When the young one comes out, that that person has a bird that sounds like this or it could be like a goose call out there for that person it could be a dog bark for that person it could be a chainsaw for that person or a little beep or a beep like the horn beep but notice what your call is and and you'll see it as soon as a certain person comes out there'll be a different sound Hmm. and they're ambushed by that they'll be in the trees because they have, you know, great eyesight, so they're going to be way out in the trees. And if you look, you're going to see it's either cut out or it's to where you can see where they're sitting down. But it's at the front door and the back door at all times. And the car, maybe towards the car where you get in and out. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the Bigfoot path. Oh, um, like in, in the forest, the Bigfoot have their own path. It's matted down. It's, it's already where you can't hear it's you know how it's matted down no crunch right but but it runs diagonal like if you're looking at a tree line it's not going to be like a straight in line it's going to come in diagonal like it's going behind a wall like a matador kind of bull thing i think the matadors have some protection wall where they can jump in between every now and then it's real slim um, i don't you know the bullfighters kind of guy <laughs> right <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> but they come in diagonal, but those paths also cross game trails and human trails. So every now and then when you're walking, you're going to see 
a perfect path that's straight between trees that leads you know you're gonna look diagonal but you're gonna see it and then you then you look to the right and you're gonna see that it leads to another place hmm. that's, that's how they're real i mean they're quick getaway but this is a runway for them and always watch the logs the trees that are pushed over at the creeks the bridges um there's oftentimes an ambush spot nearby dug in or a blind field underneath like you're like when the tree is uprooted and it's laid across a stream or a ravine or a waterway so we went out one one day it, just exploring you know we wasn't doing anything you know for a video and we was out there and where we was there's a little like stream and we followed this you know pretty far back into the woods and we noticed this like type of TP house built but it was built almost perfect the trees were all leaned over in the shape of a TP uh, it was all closed in with like leaves and grass it had a door and everything and it was probably oh how far would you say was it in the woods oh god we walked for two hours in yeah so quite a ways uh, we actually found an old home place when we went through there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we was pretty far back in there we're actually going to revisit that we got ran out of there yeah <laughs> Sarah got a picture of the Bigfoot, though. Uh, oh. It followed us and ran us out, and she actually got a photograph of it. Yep. Is that on one of y'all's videos? Yes, I'm trying to think. Uh, the, was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'll have to send you the link. I'm not sure yeah. what we named it, but uh, she took a picture of it, and this was a big, broad Bigfoot. Yeah. He was huge. Very big. <laughs> and we're actually, we're going to go back to this spot. We're going to try to explore this house. We're hoping it's moved on and we're able to get close to uh, <laughs> explore it. But uh, I don't know. I'm hoping we can. Cat scare you. Yeah, wow. dude. It's going to be bad. <laughs> Cat scare you. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to, we're going to try to get in there. Really? <laughs> says, don't yeah. go. She feels <laughs> <on that> day. <laughs> yeah, I don't even nope. think I went last time. No. Nope. Nope. Kaylee, after we okay. had that experience. Yeah, after after the experience, we lost poor little Kaylee with this. She's uh <laughs> she's trying to figure out if she's even gonna go back with us. We have some places we're wanting to go, uh <laughs> I don't know if y'all are planning on it, but for, uh, I think for Halloween, we have a big event planned, and, uh, we're hoping that everything works out and we're able to do it, but as long as we can keep the cat away from these girls, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> they both about jumped out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it jumped up into a box and knocked it over. We about flew out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I may have given them PTSD. <laughs> I'm barefooted. I need my running shoes on right now. <laughs> uh, I was going to also ask, uh, when you seen that Bigfoot, where was it? Was it in front of you? Was it to the right of you? To the left of you? It, uh, you? it made noises growled at us and started whistling so i knew from experience that it was time to leave no he wanted to know where it was it was behind us it, yeah. it, it followed us out yeah it we did not see it going in and we even had my brother-in-law with me which he didn't believe in nothing at that time he said there was no bigfoot and i kept telling him i said we need to leave it's telling us to leave and he's <laughs> like there's nothing here i'm gonna go up there and look well he started up there all right and then it let out that growl, and he beat us almost to the truck. <laughs> yeah, he was he was done, and he's like, "Damn, man, I did not know that thing existed." He was scared to death, and in fact, we haven't even been able to get him to go Bigfoot hunting with us. Nope. We've been trying to get him to go, and he's like, "No, I'm not going back to the woods at dark." 
He and, has no intention on seeing anything in the woods. No, he won't. <laughs> that, and he used to fish at nighttime. He would fish. And then whenever he had that encounter, he was done. His, she's his wife. She'll yeah. tell you. He won't go down there in the dark no more. Mm. He said, after that, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, she turned around and she got a great picture of it. It followed us all the way out. And I think it made sure we left. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the one y'all saw. Yes. Because they're long. Right. Yeah, a lot of them will lay, lay flat and there'll be like a little ridge and they'll just look right over the top of it or they'll be under brush like that. And you, you know, that little dark spot underneath the brush, you know, they're usually behind that brush is a big body. <laughs> oh my goodness. You imagine walking up and something like that just reaching yeah. up. Woo. Well, we're planning on going back. I don't know if that was a permanent home for it or if maybe it was a nest. I'm not sure. But it's that, in the middle of nowhere. Are you talking about that big TP structure? Yes. Yeah, that was it. Um, uh, it's comfortable there. Yeah, because... Nobody's been there that I know of in no. in years. And there was no other, other trails, I mean, really. Yeah, it's just the a place that, that nobody goes. And, and sometimes you underground of those structures, too. Tunnels somewhere around. Like, there was some of these things mark what's under the ground, also. You know what smell I've been getting? I don't know if y'all have ever smelt this, and I think the girls smelt it for the first mm, time. Yeah. I, hold on, hold on one second for a second, okay? Okay. If you don't mind. Okay, there are five smells that are commonly known with a Bigfoot. That is, of course, that stink raunchy smell. Then you get the, the smell of frankincense and myrrh. Uh -huh. You get the smell of a fresh pine forest. And you get the smell of perfume, but you also get a no-smell scent as far as that. But Now we want to hear what you smell. Black licorice. Yep. Okay, well, that's like a, what, that must have been a perfume smell for you. <laughs> it was just like a kid had opened a pack of black licorice. It was so strong. Very strong. Yeah. That would be anise, A-N-I-S-E, seed is what that comes from. It was strong. It was really bad. But we, but we believe you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was yeah, because I was like, I smell black licorice. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, yeah, I smell that too. And then Kaylee the other night, what was it you said you smelled on our, we're going on a nightly walk. I have diabetes, so I walk for exercise. Oh, the other night? Yeah, what was it you smelled? I said I smelled Skittles. She said she could smell Skittles. <laughs> Skittles. Sweet yeah. smell. Yeah, those are sweet smells. Yeah, so that like is all I could, that's all I could smell on the whole walk. Huh. Do, do y'all have to walk every night this same road? <laughs> we, we usually do. We was late walking last night, so we ended up walking in the dark. Uh, we walked about a mile. Mm -hmm. And we did notice a weird thing. is On our walks, usually the cows are waiting on us and they follow us. But there was no cows. There was nothing. It was just dead quiet. But she could smell Skittles. Y'all were, were late? The cows moved on. They weren't going to hang out there. <laughs> yeah, they were gone. It was really quiet last night. They, they all hung out there because they knew y'all were coming at that time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also, um, the Bigfoots, we tell people you have to change your habits, routines, and schedules because they know if you're coming out every night, they know what time you come home, they know what time you leave for work, they know what time you come take the trash out, and, oh, that's something too, no trash outside. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I'll always tell everybody I have one rule, and this is a rule that I try to never break, and it's the most important rule, I think. Always bring somebody that you can outrun. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> <laughs> so, also, also, I was going to say that whenever we're tracking, you know, one of our rules are if 
if a, a Bigfoot, you know, pops up, you know, you drop down and we'll shoot, you know, over you and you crawl back, you know, towards where we're at. But, you know, because we're shooting slugs, you know, but uh, I know Tracker E was, first time she heard that, she said, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run. Yeah. <laughs> into a cave and he, and he says okay so if anything starts coming towards you you just drop down and I'm like that's the plan that's your plan <laughs> I think Kaylee may do that just from passing out probably shoot <laughs> <laughs> over her head then. do you have or have you heard any stories of the Bigfoot or the predators using weapons I've never heard of them uh, using weapons uh down where we're at, we do find a lot of Indian artifacts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of arrowheads and stuff in the area that we're at. Uh, there used to be a place down where we're at that was called the uh, Payment Grounds. And it's where the Indians would trade with the U.S. Cavalry. And I have found some things there. I found a snuff box that stamped uh, silver U.S. Cavalry. Found a lot of uh, arrowheads. I uh, found some marbles uh, marbles we found some knives that the indians would use you know you, where they place their thumb to do their cutting and stuff we found a lot of that stuff is down in there it's very prevalent now my friend he found a bone while we were down there and this was a large femur and you could tell that it was not an animal it couldn't have been a human because it was too big it was shoved in the ground halfway and he was trying to pull it out he's a uh ex deputy sheriff and he was trying to pull it out and he couldn't pull it out so i helped him pull it out and we pulled this big bone out and he's like i'm going to keep this bone and i'm like oh okay so I'm, I'm young at the time and we go home and that night when he went to bed he laid the bone on his front porch which is screened in and whatever it was came to his house and tried to pull his air conditioner out of the window and he ended up shooting his 3030 through his window to get it to go away. And then when he woke up the next day, the bone was gone. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, also in that, the DVD, we talk about how the Bigfoots, they'll run up to 55 miles per hour for at least five miles. So we tell people to go at least 65 for at least 15 miles to make sure you're clear. But also, when you're out there, Bigfoots, the translucent ones, and, and if you ever saw our DVD, it's, uh, we show like three of them. But um, people will actually take Bigfoot's home because they'll leave their car door open, they'll crawl in the back. They don't have to be the 25 footers, you know, they could be the one footer, the three footer, uh, or the ones that get inside or mm -hmm. the back of a back of a pickup, <laughs> back of a trailer, and some of them will even ride on top of cars. And people just take them home all the time. They don't know if from like camp out some fishing cool. areas. I'm glad you just said that because Kaylee and them the other night, I told them when we were leaving that I saw eyes looking in Kaylee's window yep. whenever we were driving away. Because I looked back and I could see through her window and I saw two eye shines looking in her window. And that's the same night that they got the pictures of the footprints on the back glass. And they didn't believe me. I told them, I said, I saw eye shine. And they're like, no, there's no way. And I was like, that's what I seen. What? The eye shine. What color was it? It was uh, red. Okay, the the vicious, the worst or the most vicious of them has the orange colors. Then you got the red, the pink, you got blue, green, uh, yellow, and white. Um, and the viciousness, you know, they can, uh, the one who has the most experience, I guess, you know, like if you get upset and mad, your eyes will turn blood red, your uh, uh, blood vessels, I guess, will turn, you know, to where you can see red. And they have a, like a, like a lizard's film over their eye in one section that's like that, whatever color that is. And when it looks at you, that's when you get eye shine. That's when it's fixated directly on you, because it's that that eye shine is directly at you know, like right in the middle of the eye, because they're either looking left or right. But when they're looking right at you, that filter or that film lines up. 
And so whenever you see eye shine, that's they're looking directly at you. They're fixated on you. So when you was looking out there, it was looking directly at you, watching the house, watching for that curtain open up or any kind of movement. Told you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in my window. Yep. You don't have your bed by the window, do you? Oh, no. Oh, no, she does. <laughs> yep. My head is right out the window. Uh, I'm going to tell y'all a story real quick of my <laughs> junior high, my best friend, her husband, he's our age, and he went back to Louisiana for a family reunion. He was a little kid. He was nine or seven to nine. And... The kids are all playing up and down an old logging road and, you know, making noise like kids will do. But they started getting a sense something was trailing them on the right. And they went ahead back home and he went in to take a bath. And it's back when everybody's windows were open, those screens. And uh, the window was seven feet off the ground and a big hairy arm reached in and snatched to pull him out the window. Mm -hmm. And he went out in front of everyone bare naked. That's how you know, terrified he was that he went out in front of the whole family, backs him up, and he's still traumatized by that to this mm. day. He doesn't like to talk about it. But that's an exa a real-life example of someone we know who almost got snatched when they were a child. Wow. By one. Oh, my goodness. Well, we know what we'll be doing this weekend, rearranging a bedroom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First on the bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, if... Um, the home is not like, you know, uh, on cement, if it's on blocks or if it's raised up, the Bigfoots will tunnel underneath your sheeting and they will they also eat uh, the, the sewer, I guess we would say. So they will pull your sewer apart and they will get into that and try to eat and smell what people are or what people would taste like. They'll also try to figure out which room you're in and you know, vibrate that part of the floor to see if they can get a reaction or a noise in there to know who's where. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. They might hear the little pebbles when, when uh, you hear that, take your car alarm and just do a little beep or, or something else. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy loud, just enough to let them know. That you. Well, yeah. Kaylee, Kaylee's got something uh, knocking on her wall at night. Beep your car alarm every time you hear something and change it up from one beep, three beeps, then back to two, then back to one. Anytime you hear knocking, movement, or anything, and you can do the car alarm because you're inside, and but they will start backing. Oh they make that mistake, that creak, you're beeping on them, and the other ones will you know, pull them back and say, you know, you're the juvenile making all these mistakes, this beeper's going off, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. And they'll back up. They'll back off of y'all. As long as you don't wake up if you don't halfway in your window. Oh. <laughs> they will come to me in the winter time up on the house to stay warm. I don't know. If yeah, you if you have a fireplace or anything. That is just uh -huh. scary to think about. And, uh, yeah, just look out from your doors. Look for it. the darkest patch that is in line with your doors. I mean, I guess the good thing about the side of the house that I'm on is there's a uh, street light that's pointing like right at the side of the house that I'm on. Good. 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 They will tightrope that light. <laughs> wherever, wherever that, <laughs> like, like with the game cam. If you look at it with not vision, you're going to see how much mm -hmm. light that game cam yeah, shines yeah, out. And what we do is, if we want to catch tracks out there, we will do that the first night, and then we will put water and just drench, you know, the outside of that light, and you'll see tracks in the morning where they tie roped it and stepped into that wet spot. Oh. You can also rake out from under your windows and loosen up that dirt or, you know, make it soft so that it's a, it's a, we call it a trap trap um, to get good prints or to know if they're coming directly up to your window. Looking in your window at night. Oh, goodness. 
that's another thing we're finding is how often the tracks are outside of children's windows and it's just very disturbing and uh, oh, yeah. that is very disturbing <laughs> And we don't whoop, and we don't tree knock, and... Well, that's more like giving an uh, invitation that food is out in the area. Here we are. Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know <laughs> no, knocking. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I have tree knocked before, and it caused a lot of bad things to happen. Yes, I used to do all those things. Um, the turning point for me was when I walked out to my grandson's um, where he had a rope swing across the creek. And by then I had been learning enough and watching how they set their traps and how they corral their prey and herd it through the forest and what they do. And when I walked out to that area, they had snares and blinds all around his little spot exactly like they would pray and I, that's where that was going by then they were tunneling they were that's terrible oh my goodness yeah oh, bad. Pretty, that's terrible um, life-changing moment for me because they were my forest friend before then and i you know i right. wanted them to be that but they're not and right exactly. yeah i agree, exactly. I, agree. Yeah. I hate to cut it short but grandma's calling she's babysitting and she's wanting me to pick up the kids <laughs> <laughs> enjoyed this yes, we'll, yes we'll, we we'll appreciate it so much we'll have to do it again yes we should we should tell grandma we say hi yeah oh. yeah, yeah yeah for sure and you all keep in contact and uh, like i said i'm going to subscribe as soon as we get off and i'm going to put your all's link in the description for whoever wants to take a look at your page uh subscribe to y'all help support you guys at what you do uh I'll share them out on a couple of my social medias that I have going. Yeah, yeah. we'll share you all out and we'll we'll try to help you all because I believe that you're on the same uh, trail that we are. We're just trying to find the, the truth. Exactly. Yeah, so we need to have more conversations. For sure. Yeah. Yep. All right, have a good night. All right, it was it was a pleasure. It was for us. It was. Right. Bye-bye. Have a good you. night. <laughs> good night. Good night.